Today, I'm going to talk about a very famous disappearance case in France. It's probably one of the most publicized disappearance cases in the country. This case has almost obsessed me for years. And since we finally got the last word on this story, well, I think it's time to talk about it. The victim, Lucas Tranche, was born on April 18, 1999. He has an older brother and a younger brother. His parents, Natalie and Eric Tranche, are engineers at the Commissariat A L'Energie Atomique AO Energies Alternatives on the Markul nuclear site. He's described by both his family and friends as a happy, outgoing, kind, helpful person who didn't want to disappoint those he loved. He was both shy and sociable. He enjoyed animals and nature. At the time of his disappearance, Lucas was a student in the 10th grade at the Albert Einstein High School in Bagnalsersese, in the Gard region. He was a good student. He wanted to become a veterinarian. He was passionate about scouting, which he had been practicing in his town for several years. He was also a member of a badminton club and practiced swimming. He used social media very little, but used the Snapchat app. At the time of his disappearance, the family was planning a trip to the United States. Disappearance. Wednesday, March 18th, 2015, 7.50 a.m. Lucas is dropped off by his mother at the high school. He spends the morning there. His best friend points out that he looks tired. And the teenager replies that he has been watching videos late into the night. Around 12 o'clock, Lucas walks home and has lunch with his nanny and his two brothers. 2 p.m. He accompanied his little brother to a friend's house. With the nanny. 3 p.m. Lucas is brought back home by the nanny. 4 p.m. Valentine sees Lucas. Alone. In the garden. He's absorbed by his phone. 5.10 p.m. Lucas and his older brother have to ride their scooter to a bus stop to catch a bus that will take them to the municipal swimming pool in Laudun Lardoise for their swimming training. Valentine went ahead, thinking that his brother would join him. Indeed, Lucas wasn't ready, just sitting in the dining room, still absorbed by his phone. However, when Lucas leaves the family home after locking the front door, he doesn't go to the bus stop. 5.30 p.m. Valentine tries to contact Lucas. Not seeing him arrive at the bus stop. He will fall on his mailbox. Lucas having switched off his cell phone at about 5.16 p.m. Shortly after his departure from home. Between 5.15 p.m. and 8 p.m. No one knows at this time what Lucas did during this time slot. The teenager left without his pool stuff showing that he hadn't planned to meet his brother at the bus stop. On the other hand, he took a backpack, containing very few things, and not even enough to survive. Nobody knows what his intentions were when he left the family home. Around 8 p.m., Natalie Tranche goes to get her children at the bus stop. However, only Valentine is present. He explains to her that Lucas didn't come with him to the swimming pool and theorizes that his brother would have missed the bus and would then have remained at home. However, Natalie is certain that this cannot be the case. Since she was there during the last two hours and didn't see Lucas, the mother first tries to contact Lucas on his phone, but it goes directly to his answering machine. She then tried to geolocate him, thanks to an application she had on her phone. In vain. She then contacted the emergency services of nearby hospitals, hoping to find out if her son had been hospitalized after a fall or an accident. However, no hospital had seen Lucas Tranche. Natalie then contacts Lucas' friends. 
but they too have no news of him. Around 8.20 p.m., noticing that nobody knows where her son is, the mother and Valentine get a picture of Lucas and go to the police station. A wanted notice is diffused, and the investigation starts. 10 p.m. A first patrol explores the surroundings of the Tranche house. Without finding anything, Lucas's papers, as well as his pocket money, his house keys, and his pool stuff, are still in the teenager's room. It misses only his backpack, and his phone. Around 11 p.m., Eric Tranche returns from a professional trip. Not to worry her husband. Natalie hadn't said anything to him. She then informs him of Lucas' disappearance. Eric joins then the research. Around 3.30 a.m., the police and Lucas' relatives are forced to stop their search. Investigations. An investigation for worrying disappearance is immediately opened. After the deposition of Natalie, a rogatory commission is launched in the United States to access the conversations and exchanges that Lucas had on Snapchat. But these searches will not give anything. Same for the examination of the computer and the tablet of Lucas. A few days after the beginning of the investigation, the investigators use luminol in all the house of the family in order to take possible DNA traces. Traces are found and taken on the carpet near the bed of Lucas. Analyses are carried out, in order to know if it's Lucas' blood, or just a reaction to a household product. It would seem that these traces are not useful to the investigations, since no statement on it will be made thereafter. On March 14, 2019, New checks scheduled for a long time, as well as a reconstruction of the disappearance, take place at the family's home. No element that could help the investigation is found. On March 26, 2019, the new investigating judge who inherited the case in September 2018 ordered that searches around the house be carried out, but this will remain without result testimonies. Numerous witness interviews were conducted. The police questioned Lucas' friends, teachers, coaches, neighbors, the drivers of the cars passing through Bagnalsersese that day, etc. During these auditions, several people claimed to have seen someone who could be Lucas Tranche in the hours following his disappearance. A neighbor claimed to have seen Lucas on the day of his disappearance. Between 5.15 and 5.30 p.m., according to her, he was heading towards the vineyards on the Sajaran Road, the opposite direction of the pool. A woman living 500 meters from these vineyards will also testify to have seen around noon. March 19. A person who could correspond to Lucas crossing the grounds of his farm. A dog tracked him for a kilometer in a northern direction. Also on March 19, around 6.45 p.m., Rashid, a friend of the family, accompanied by volunteers, said that he had seen a juvenile figure during a search, while they were surveying the Mars John area, where Lucas and his father used to walk. A volunteer saw a person sitting on top of a hill, thinking at once that it was Lucas. A photo was taken, but the silhouette was never identified, the image being of too poor quality to allow any identification. On March 23, another team of volunteers reported seeing the teenager on the heights of St. Gervais. Around 10.30 a.m., according to the testimonies, he was observing a group of workers working in the vineyards before disappearing into the woods. A 25-year-old motorcyclist living in a nearby village will testify that he saw Lucas walking with a backpack along a path towards Espresin in saint andre de in the late afternoon of March 23. 
the teenager was heading towards a hill. The area was searched by a dog and a helicopter. Without success. A teenager and his father will testify that they recognized Lucas at the Cultura store in La Pontet. Vaucluse. In the afternoon of March 28. According to them. He was accompanied by a woman between 45 and 50 years old. However. The verifications will lead to nothing. In December 2016. Investigators released the sketch of a witness. Seen by a passerby near Lucas' house on the day of his disappearance. The man is the owner of a Citroen axe and is tattooed on both forearms in September 2017. The sketch is renewed and clarified. It's finally on October 17, 2018 that this witness is found. The man is placed in detention and questioned. Finally. He's released. Having nothing to do with the disappearance. The letters. Seven months after Lucas' disappearance. His parents began receiving anonymous letters from someone giving them news about their son. These letters claim that Lucas is in good health. And that they should not worry. Until early summer 2016. Eleven letters will be sent to the family. The investigators will eventually find this crow. By viewing videos of a surveillance camera of the sorting center where he had come to put his last letter. The man sending the letters was a 57-year-old supermarket employee who lived in Valence in the Drome. He is a mythomaniac and had absolutely nothing to do with Lucas' disappearance. The man was sentenced in October 2017. By the Correctional Court of Nîmes. To one year in prison firm. As well as one year in conditional sentence. Antoine Zoya. On March 1. 2016. About a year after Lucas' disappearance. Antoine Zoya. 16 years old. Disappeared in Clarensac. A commune in the guard department. 62 kilometers from bagnel sur -Cese. He was a first-year science student at the Albert Camus High School in Nîmes. He had a personality. Quite close to that of Lucas. And like him. He disappeared mysteriously after leaving his house. Around 1.30 p.m. He was last seen in a tobacconist's shop. Buying a lighter. An investigation is carried out. To try to see if there is a link between these two disappearances. However, there is nothing to indicate any link. On September 29, 2018, two and a half years after Antoine's disappearance, a body was found hanging from a tree in a hard-to-reach forest in Clarensac by a hunter. Next to the body, clothes belonging to Antoine are posed. Three days later, the analyses confirmed that it was the body of Antoine Zoya. To this day, the investigation continues. To know if it's a suicide or a murder. Nordal Lelandace. On January 11, 2018. The investigation focuses on a possible involvement of Nordal Lelandace. In the disappearance of Lucas the man is the murderer of the young Miley's. Whose disappearance occurred in August 2017. And the murderer of Corporal Arthur Neuer whose disappearance occurred in April 2017, having traveled several times to the guard, near bagnel sur -Cese. having family living there, Nordal Lelandais becomes a suspect in the case. On February 27, 2018, his involvement in the case of the disappearance of Lucas is finally ruled out. He was in a serre, at the time of the facts. According to the analysis of his phone. Other potential leads. As the investigators question Lucas' classmates. They discover that the teenager is a victim of harassment. Indeed. He has the back of his head flattened. Which is why he's mocked at school. Two weeks before the disappearance of Lucas. A student had taken a photo of the back of his head and had made a mocking photo montage. 
which he published on Snapchat. Thus, investigators have never ruled out the possibility of a runaway because of these mockeries. While searching Lucas' tablet, the investigators noticed that the teenager had watched a program for hours in which a host had to survive alone in the wilderness. The question then arises to know if Lucas wouldn't have wanted to do the same thing. However, this track is quickly discarded. He took neither his knife nor his sleeping bag. The parents of the teenager will decide in spite of everything to pose some meal in the middle of nature. By joining a small note to it. Lucas you know it. We love you very extremely. Don't worry. We are here for you. We will meet you every night in the pumpkin wood. We will be alone. Lucas will unfortunately never come to the meeting point. The family led is evoked by the investigators. Who then check the statements of the whole family. In particular those of Valentine his phone is tapped. But this lead is quickly dismissed. The surveillance leads to nothing. And their statements are all correct. As they searched Lucas' room. A new lead revealed itself to investigators. That of Lucas' passion for rocks. In December 2014. The teenager had picked up some heavy. Magnetized rocks. Convinced they were meteorites. But when looking into Lucas' room. It was noticed that three of the most beautiful rocks the teenager had collected were no longer there. Did Lucas, on the day of his disappearance, have an appointment related to these stones? Body discovery. It's finally on June 24, 2021 that bones as well as pieces of clothing and a backpack are discovered by firemen in 800 meters of the family residence. The research, ordered by the judge of instruction, had led the firemen to seek along the rocky escarpments of a cliff on which Lucas had the habit of going. This place hadn't been searched before, being difficult of access and requiring a specific equipment. The day after the discovery of the bones, Lucas' phone is found in the same place as well as the fragments of a watch and the shreds of a jacket. On July 8, 2021, the expertise confirms that the bones found are those of Lucas. There is a very good chance that we will never know the exact circumstances of Lucas' death. The analysis of his phone didn't bring anything new. Nothing in this partial examination allows us to know more about that day. No appointment. No meeting. No threat or particular project, said an investigator. On the investigation file, it's stated that it was an accidental death. Conclusion. Honestly, I am relieved that we finally know what happened to Lucas Tranche. It's sad to say, but I think a lot of people felt that Lucas was already dead. That he wouldn't be found alive. Of course. It would have been better if he had been found alive. But after six years of searching. On the other hand. There are still several unanswered questions that bother me and that have about 0% chance of being. Answered. For example. Why did Lucas decide to go to the steep cliffs? Instead of going to the pool? Was he meeting someone there? Did he just want to go for a walk in the forest? If he had found someone there, what would it be for? For the three stones that disappeared from his room? I honestly find that hard to believe. I don't see why he would meet someone on top of a remote cliff. Even for stones. But let's say he did meet someone on that cliff. Would the meeting have gone wrong? Would the person Lucas was with have pushed him off the cliff? Following an altercation? But what could the dispute be about? If the theory of a meeting gone wrong is true. The only hypothesis I have is that Lucas would have decided to confront one of his harasses that day. The tone would then have escalated. Leading to Lucas falling off the cliff. On the other hand. 
there is no indication that Lucas planned to see anyone at this location. His phone was searched. With nothing to support that lead coming up. Unless there's a way to erase the messages without any possibility of retrieving them. I don't know. As for the fact that Lucas' big brother reported that the teenager spent his afternoon absorbed by his phone on the day he disappeared. I don't think that's enough evidence to declare that he was planning a meeting with someone. I mean, it's enough that he came across a long video that he was interested in. Or that he was chatting with friends about trivial things. Or even that he was just playing on his phone to pass the time. To leave the impression that he was totally absorbed by his phone. It would be necessary to check with the people around him to find out if Lucas used to spend a lot of time on his phone or not. But at the same time, I tell myself that for his brother to report it, it still means that it was out of the ordinary. Another question is, who was the person that the volunteers saw while they were surveying the mass John? Maybe it was just a teenager who had skipped school and decided to rest on this rock python. When he saw that he had been spotted by the volunteers, he preferred to leave. And when he learned that he had been photographed, he preferred not to say anything for fear that his parents would learn that he hadn't been in class. Question mark. Well, it's a shaky hypothesis. Of course. But I find it hard to believe that it was Lucas that the volunteers saw that day. The same goes for the young man that other volunteers say they observed people working in their vineyards and then disappearing into the woods. Given the situation. Yes. This kind of behavior could be seen as odd. Suspicious. But in the end. It could have just been people walking around. Also. Another question that still has no answer. When did Lucas die? He would have been seen alive. Almost ten days after his disappearance. Either walking on the side of a road. Or in a cultura store. There is a very good chance that Lucas died the day he disappeared. And that the people who saw him would have in fact just seen people who looked more or less like. The teenager. However. Who knows? Maybe Lucas took a few detours. Before going to the cliff. The chances that Lucas' death was the result of a bad encounter. Or a murder following a meeting gone wrong. Are quite low. Yes. These hypotheses are always studied by the investigators. They have never been dismissed. But the chances that the explanation of the death of Lucas is one of these two leads. A week. It's extremely probable that it was an accidental fall. Currently the investigators are leaning towards the idea that Lucas wanted to take a selfie. He would then have fallen from the cliff. I personally find it strange not to go to the pool. Just to take a selfie on top of a cliff. Especially since he told his brother. That he was going to join him and close the house. Why not just say he didn't want to go to the pool. And go for a walk in the forest. To take pictures. Anyway. I have a hard time with the. He fell while taking a selfie theory. For me. He just tripped or slipped. By accident. And fell. There is no need to take selfies to fall off a cliff. Finally. I seem to have read that the skull of Lucas had never been found. But ITRS not sure. If someone can confirm or deny this fact. Don't hesitate to tell me. Sources.